thank, thanking the Father for his faithfulness. And uh, again, what Jamie and I just want to thank you for your generosity to us last Sunday and the cards and the giving and the uh, and everything. It was wonderful, and, and Jamie has been shopping extravagantly <laughs> with those cards, right? Yeah, so praise God. Now, um, at this time, let's dismiss kids to go to Children's Church. And yeah, wow, an incredible group of kids. Yes. Yeah, and they're excited about it. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, before I before I minister, I do want to have a at least one quick testimony and Amber, do you want to come on up? So, she's she's getting moral support, right? That is important. So, now, uh, uh, was it two or three weeks ago, Jim had a word of knowledge, and I can't remember exactly what it was about. It was three weeks ago, and Amber came to me last week, and she said, I know who that word of knowledge was for, and so I just want her to share. Okay. Um, My manager, um, her and her husband have been in and out of the hospital for a little while, Uh, He has lost all feeling to be able to walk or anything like that. So they had went to the city to a church or to a hospital. And the week after he had said something about all of that, they had found a spot on his spine. And they thought that what it was is that was blocking to where it was cutting off all his nerves on his legs and to his arms. Well, come to find out that mass was leaking an infection into his body that was eating at his nerves. And when they found it, they had went back in there to look at it after they had run through uh, fluids all through his body, and it was gone. And by Halloween, he was walking and got to take his, his son trick-or-treating. So I, I don't know, but if you if you – heard and seen everything I did, there's absolutely no way you can't believe that that wasn't God. And I, you know, there's, I don't understand. There's a lot of still mysteries and healing, but there was something about even releasing that word of knowledge that I believe facilitated healing. And so Jim was just like, I don't know what I'm saying. I just, what the heck, right? But and sometimes in just stepping out in faith, it does release something that facilitated healing for this gentleman. So we just rejoice in that. And you guys, God's doing some amazing things. We didn't go pray for him. God did it, you know, and there was even just something, I believe, in the releasing of that word of knowledge. Again, I don't understand all that, um, but it caused something of the presence of God to touch this gentleman. Amen. So praise God. And, you know, we're just healing, hearing lots of reports of healing and miracles. Um, you know, I shared a few weeks ago even that there was a, a lady that came over for one, for one of our healing rooms from the Duncan area, and um, she got prayer. She had Graves' disease, and that has gone in remission. And um, so exciting. Uh, she thanked me. She said, thank you so much that you guys are doing this. There are other reports of healing that I wish I could share, but at this moment, I can't. Um, I'm just really, you guys, so much is happening, and uh, hopefully in days ahead, I'll be able to share more. So so we're just, I think God's just going to emphasize the miraculous, and it's it's part of what God's commissioned us to do, uh, you know, and um, what's the topic of the supernatural school uh, this month, and I, I just think more and more, We're just going to see more and more people get healed. And um, Ariel and Jean both got prayer um, Friday at that conference in Shawnee. Either one of you guys want to give a report on that? Either one of you ladies? If you want to, that's great. You got healed. Amen. I know, uh, you know, I know there are stages of healing. I know Jean was feeling better. I know Ariel, that pain was totally gone. And anything you want to add to that? Okay, come on up, Ariel. Gene, anything you want to add? No? Okay. 
That's totally good. Yeah, if you want to come, that's great. But if not, Ariel, go ahead. So, um, I, at least some of you know, I've been dealing with shoulder pain for sorry, shoulder pain for several years. It's been about five years. It'll get healed and it'll last for a week or two, and it comes back most of the time within a couple of days. Um, so he was having other people pray, and it felt like it went from the bottom of my shoulder blade straight up my back into my neck. Um, and so, of course, that's a spirit of infirmity um, that's moving around and just kind of running yeah because it went from my shoulder straight up like it changed and went in different places so yeah he yes and so after that he bound the spirit of infirmity and all of the pain went um and then of course it's released stuff in my back and so it's been popping and cracking and from my neck down things are a lot better so Amen. hallelujah so we just rejoice in what god did and uh, of course, that the he she's referring to is Robbie Dawkins, and uh, Robbie spoke in three in three sessions on Friday, and uh, had a word of knowledge about uh, pain in the back, and many people came up. But what Robbie did, and this is such a great technique that a lot of people use, um, he didn't pray for anybody. He called up kids, and had kids pray, and we watched as people got healed. And so just to say anyone, then those who got healed would turn around and pray for others. And so just to show it's not about um, so much the person, the minister, but it's the equipment of every believer to move in the miraculous. Amen. And so if you want to know more, you can come to Supernatural School this month. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, let's, let's jump in this morning. And I'm going to interweave some of the testimonies from this weekend. Uh, it was a powerful time together. Um, I, I'm just more convicted uh, than ever about what God is wanting to do in the earth in this season. And um, God just continues to do crazy things. Uh, a lot of people in Hollywood getting touched. I mean, we know what's happened with Kanye and then also one of the Kardashians' um, uh, ex-husbands got saved last weekend. And uh, Chris Rock, who recently had a car wreck, said that when he came out of that, God is speaking to him about his relationship with Jesus. And um, Hugh Jackman recently announced that he's born again. And I think I talked about that last week. But, um, you know, and again, are all these people completely sanctified? No, but neither are we. And, and they're and they're moving in what they know. And what was it? Kanye had a an event where there were six thousand people, and like was a thousand, two thousand, a thousand people got saved when he did an altar call. You know, praise God. Uh, and there's a tremendous, tremendous thing that's happening. Yeah, I haven't seen that happen yet. So, man, I'm not criticizing him. And let's just pray for him. Let's pray for what God's doing. Um, I, I haven't seen this movie yet, I, and I want to, but uh, the Harriet Tubman movie that's out right now is really portraying, um, how many know Harriet Tubman was a prophet? And I, th what I'm hearing is this movie is actually detailing that because the Lord would communicate with her and, and speak to her and she would facilitate than what he was saying in setting people free from slavery. And so it's powerful. I think God is even further really um, highlighting the African-American community in America. And so I think some of the greatest um, evangelists, the greatest leaders that we're going to see emerge in the body of Christ at this moment are in the African-American community. And so it's exciting what the Lord is doing. Amen. And so I, I'm thrilled about what's happening at this moment in our lives and in the church. And so praise God. I want to jump in this morning and I want to preach on, you know, and, uh, there's such a hot topic in the body of Christ and there has been the last several years. And I want to talk about it and I want to uh, focus on what, um, what about identity, okay? Now... When I talk about identity, and I think there's, a, there's even a counterfeit out there right now in the body of Christ about identity that um, is, you know, oh, if I just love myself enough. And we, should we love ourselves? Yes. But if we just focus on loving ourself and who we are, we're missing the message of identity. It's always, fun, it's always funny to me when people say, you know, stuff like, well, you just need to love yourself, and they have breast implants. 
Love yourself the way God made you. Anyway, <laughs> there's that, right? <laughs> That's a, but there's a message. Sorry, that was really inappropriate. <laughs> right? But I, I looked at Dean Friday night during this Robbie Dawkins message, and I was like, and y'all think I'm inappropriate. Right? If you were there, you know what I'm talking about. But, but there's a real message of the identity that God is placing and that he wants all of us to grow into is that we are being transformed into the image of Jesus. And, and I don't care how much I love myself and who God's made me to be, and that's awesome, but I, I love his work of transformation in my life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, we do understand that that doesn't mean that we lose our personality. Isn't it awesome that God's made us all with different personalities and different gifts, and, and we need that. You know, and that and that Jesus loves uniquely how he's made us to be. But there's an element where he's put his imprint on us and he's transforming us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I want to look at that this morning. And uh, uh, first of all, let's look at 1 John 4.17. 1 John 4.17. And this is such a key scripture in identity, and it's such a key scripture in understanding how God wants us to walk and move and live, right? So it says, by this, love is perfected with us so that we ha may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. Do you understand that as Jesus is at this moment is who you're called to be in this world, right? Isn't that, now, we have to wrap our head around that for a moment, right? Because how is Jesus at this moment? Where is Jesus at this moment? He's at the right hand of the Father. Is he seated far above all rule and dominion and devil, and principality, and power? And are we seated with him in heavenly places? As he is at this moment, so are we in this world, right? So I want us to look, let's jump over to Revelation 1, 14 and 15, and let's get a glimpse of who he is at this moment, amen? So let's read this, and this is, of course, John uh, was in the spirit on the Lord's day on the Isle of Patmos, and uh, yeah, and uh, wow, yeah, Thursday night we were in the spirit in Shawnee, and that's all I'm going to say. Uh, not, I'm not rubbing in that some of y'all weren't there, right? Uh, <laughs> but John had this revelation of the one who was walking among the lampstands. And um, it says, and let's start reading in verse 13. And it said, In the middle of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed in a robe, reaching to the feet, and girded across his breast with a golden girdle. And his head and his hair were like white wool, like snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. And his feet were like burnished bronze when it has been caused to glow in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of many waters. And in his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in its strength. That's Jesus at this moment, right? Seated at the right hand of the Father in great glory, in great power, and we could probably break down all those things one by one and look at the, the power and the glory and the majesty that's on Jesus at this moment. The reality is, as he is in this world, at, as he is at this moment, so are we in this world, right? Are you seated in heavenly places with Christ? You're seated with him in authority, right, in a power, in glory. And we, we've talked about the authority over the last two weeks, 
Ephesians 1.20, for the sake of time, I'm just going to reference this. You can read it later. But Ephesians 1.20 said he is seated at the right hand of the Father. Just want to let you know that D- Dean was scripturally accurate, you know. Hallelujah. It's a good thing. Amen. Uh, Colossians 3.1. Let's also, let's just turn there. Let's look at Colossians 3.1 very quickly. I'm just laying a foundation because we have to understand who we are and who God has called us to be at this moment. Amen. Do you understand how much authority you have? No, you don't. I can tell from that response. We don't get it. We don't get the authority that we have and what Christ is, is walking in and what he wants us to walk in. Colossians 3, verse 1, if then you have been raised up with Christ, right? Now, we've been raised up with Christ, but being raised up with Christ is not automatic for every human. There's a big if right there, right? When we're born again, we're seated with him. If then you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. He's seated there. We're seated at the right hand with him. Now, that all sounds wonderful, but sometimes if you're like me, you're like, well, I don't really feel like I'm seated at the right hand of the Father. And sometimes we don't do things or walk in things, right? Because there's still, even though we're positionally seated there, there's still a transforming work of the Holy Spirit that he's doing in us, not only individually, but even very importantly, that he's doing corporately in the church to transform us into that image, right? The Holy Spirit does all these things, and, uh, you know, he does things like he, he, don't you love what the Holy Spirit does? He comforts us. Don't you love the comfort of the Holy Spirit, right? He, He gives us gifts, right? He reminds us of what Jesus said. He leads us into all truth. He clothes us with power. And the reason he does all those things is because he's actually transforming us into the image of Jesus. And not just Jesus on the cross. Now stay with me here. Because there's the important, we can't get to this place without coming through the cross. Right, We have to understand what it means to uh, go to the cross and, and to experience the divine exchange. Amen. But there's a reality, and this almost sounds, because it doesn't diminish the cross at all, so bear with me. But Jesus isn't on the cross anymore. Right. Now, do we value the cross and love the cross and cling to the cross? Yes. Do we, have, we still live a life of self-denial and all those things? Yes. But there's a reality that Jesus is seated in heavenly places now, and he's calling us to be seated with him in power, glory, and authority, and victory. And a lot of times we stop at the cross. Now, do we still cling to the cross? Are there still moments that you have to like, I got to take that to the cross? We don't ever get past taking things to the cross. (laughs) So hear me. But there's something about that the, the victory of living in heavenly places that Holy Spirit is trying to take the church into. Right? He's equipping us. He's transforming us. And we have to say, Lord, do your work in us. Holy Spirit, conform us to that image and that victory of Jesus. Amen. His primary mission, the Holy Spirit, is to make us like Jesus. Right? Didn't Jesus come? And if you've been a part of this church for any time, you get this understanding that Jesus actually poured out his divinity He poured out what made him God. He came, he was born in the flesh, and he moved by the power of the Holy Spirit to demonstrate to all humanity that we could live the same way, right? There are times it talked about that Jesus cast out demons by the Spirit of God, right? He did miracles by the Spirit of God. We talked a couple of weeks ago that he moved in authority because he did what he saw the Father doing, 
right? He stayed connected to the heart of the Father. There was that element of power and authority. And there's this thing that the Holy Spirit is doing where he's teaching us to move like Jesus did. Now, there are times maybe that we miss it and we don't get it totally right. That's okay, right? We had a lady this week. She was talking to Jamie and myself, and she's just like, I just pray for people, and nobody gets healed, and I just want to give up. And we're like, why? Why, why do you want to give up? Because there's something about pursuing what the Lord has called us to do that we just have to continue to go after. Todd White prayed for thousands of people before anybody got healed. Right? But there came a moment where because of his pursuit and he got an impartation from Randy Clark that there was a breakthrough. It was prayer and fasting and pursuit combined with humility that says, I'm going to get in position if it means I have to go to a special meeting to get an impartation because of hunger and thirst and humility. I'll go after it, right? And he got this impartation. It began to change everything. There's this element of even if we're missing it, even if we're not seeing everything that we want to see, we still have to go in pursuit, and we still have to let Holy Spirit touch us, equip us, and lead us into that victory. Amen? And it's really interesting. You realize that there was a point where, John, and, and I'll make reference to this, and just, well, let's go ahead and turn there. John seven thirty nine. I think it's an important point to look at. Have you ever wondered why Jesus just didn't go ahead and give all his disciples the Holy Spirit when he was with them? John 7, 39. Let's read verse 38 also. Jesus saying, He who believes in me, as the scripture says, from his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For the Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So Jesus actually needed to be glorified before the Holy Spirit was given. Why is that? Because there needed to be a transformation into an arisen, ascended Jesus. Right? There was no model of Jesus ascended, risen, victorious over all the powers of darkness until he had been crucified and resurrected. Then the Holy Spirit was going to be poured out because there's something even further that the Holy Spirit is transforming the church into a place of ascension and victory at the right hand of the Father. And I don't think we can get there individually. There's elements of breakthrough that we can get, but I, I think the church has to corporately go there, right? Now, I don't know that all the church will get there, y'all. That's just me pontificating right here. <laughs> Five dollar word, right? I don't know, but I think that those who want to go Corporately, we can say, Jesus, take us there. Transform us. Transform us into the image that we're seated not only positionally, doctrinally, but experientially. Right? Where we understand, you know, Robbie Dawkins made a great statement this weekend, and he said, you know, what, what's man made out of? What were Adam and Eve made out of? Earth. What were Adam and Eve given authority over? Earth. When you're praying for the sick, you're taking authority over the earth. When you're commanding healing, when you're commanding sickness, when you're, com you're speaking forth creative miracles, you're declaring something to the earth that you've been given dominion over. Amen. There's this thing. We've been given dominion and authority, and we don't always realize it. Right? But the Holy Spirit is transforming us 
he's given us, Jesus has given us authority, right? All authority in heaven and earth has been given to, to you because of what I've done. Now go and disciple the nations, right? Because as he is, so are we in this world. Well, we're just a weak church diminishing and the world's going to get worse and worse. Now, I, I believe Jesus is still returning, you guys, right? I believe that, you know, we can, I don't want to get into all the preterism and partial preterism and all that. I still believe that there is a, a, a return of Jesus, but I think that there's so much more that's happened that we're not aware of yet, and there's so much more authority that we have, and we're to cause the kingdom of God to outgrow isn't that what the word says? That it's going to outgrow every other system on the planet? That every antichrist system is coming down? Right? As the kingdom of God grows and increases? And we have to understand that there's an authority that we're to walk in to see the kingdom released throughout the earth. Amen? And it's a supernatural kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're becoming like him. Amen. Now, I want to talk about four characteristics that should be upon us as the church, right? There's four characteristics. There's maybe more than that, but there's some that I want to talk about. First of all, there should be glory on the church. The glory. Now, we talk about the glory, and, you know, the glory is actually... And, I, you know, we've talked about this a lot, but it's, it's the manifested presence of Jesus. It's the manifested presence of the Holy Spirit to a degree that it, it begins to affect your senses. You may see expressions of the glory, right? You, you may experience expressions of the glory. You may just be very aware there's a glorious presence. There's a manifest presence of God. Right? But there's a glory that is supposed to be on the church. Amen. Now, the reality is that he lives in all of us, but his glory doesn't rest on all of us. Right? But there's a call for a glorious church to arise. So that means that part of our commission is to allow the Holy Spirit to produce glory in our lives, right? We treat it like it's optional to get a hold of the glory. Well, we'll just let that crazy church over there get a hold of the glory. No, we're, we're called to host and manifest the glory of God through the power of the Spirit, right? I, I love the glory. I love the presence. I love the presence of God when he manifests his glory, amen? And if God manifested his glory in houses and, and temples in the Old Testament, how much more does he want to do it in this moment? Right? When the, the priest, you know, they dedicated the temple and the cloud came in in such a glory, such a glory of God that they couldn't stand to minister. And why do we expect less in the New Testament? I mean, praise God we've got Scripture. But I want glory too. I want the same glory, you know. Last month in Supernatural School, we talked a lot about the nations and revival and moves of God. And, and I love the account of Azusa Street when, and, and John G. Lake was present when this happened, right? Even though he wasn't leading that revival. Many, he was actually a part of um, Zion in Chicago. I won't get off into all that. I was telling Jamie all this church history this morning, and she was just like, right? So, <laughs> but it was good, and it was important, right? But 
But they saw reports of not only was there was a fire falling and, and on, on the, the building there at Azusa Street in the early 20th century, but there was fire shooting up out of that building and the fire was meeting overhead. And the fire trucks came. Right, and they came in. There's a fire. We need to, but it wasn't burning anything up, right? Robbie Dawkins was sharing. I love this testimony. I'm gonna try to remember it. It was somewhere in Texas, and he went to this small church in Texas. I can't can't remember Kingsville or something like that. I don't know if there is a Kingsville. First, I thought he said Gainesville, and I got really excited. But uh, but that's not right. Um, but there was a Baptist pastor there that um, was actually preaching a series, Why Tongues Are of the Devil. And his wife was like, I, you know, you need to watch these videos of this Todd White, Robbie Dawkins, these guys. She said, because I think this healing stuff, it may really be real. And so he was, he was, was he watching the videos and... Um, got baptized in the Holy Spirit, spoke in tongues, and got knocked back. And he prayed in tongues for three days and couldn't stop. He got zapped. When he got up, he was speaking in tongues, and he spoke in tongues for three days and couldn't speak in English. And he was afraid to leave the church. And at one point, the fire department knocks on the door. And he's like terrified and he's having to write because he can't talk. Because he would just speak in tongues. And they're like, well, we're here to put out a fire because there's fire on the roof of the church. But there's nothing burning here. But that, that glory physically manifested. So this guy contacts Robbie Dawkins about coming and doing some meetings, and his people were like, well, well, we're booked up, and you're this tiny church. And um, Robbie Robbie found out about it and was like, no, we're going. (laughs) And they had all these crazy miracles happening and breaking out, even when people were filming it to try to discredit what they were doing. And as he said, the footage has mysteriously disappeared. Because so many people got healed, right? But there was a manifestation of the glory, right? We've had people prophesy that's going to happen here, right? I mean, we've had people walk up and get saved because they were like, there's something drawing me to this building, And I don't understand what it is. And they shook and trembled under the power of God and got saved in my office. And at first I was like, who is this? Is this for real? You know, (laughs) scared me a little bit. But I'm like, God, this is going to happen more and more. Right. But at the same time, we got to get outside the walls of the church wherever we go. And walk as vessels of the manifest glory of God. You're a temple of his presence, right? There's a glory that's supposed to be on us as the church, as the people of God. Amen? There's a power that should be on the church, right? We've talked about the dunamis power. And unfortunately, you know, because much of the church will not embrace their inheritance and call to power of the Holy Spirit. We've got whole generations of people that are turning to the New Age and the occult and psychics because the church has refused to step in to what we've been called to do. Right? We've got people turning to uh, healing energy alternatives like Reiki and therapeutic touch. I'm going to get really controversial here, so hold on. I'm going to do it. We've got stuff like the Enneagram, which everybody and even a lot of ministries are embracing. It's a personality test, but it's from the occult. 
And, and, and the guy who actually got the revelation of it got it through spirit writing. And spirit writing is where something comes and takes over your body and you can't control it and you write these things out. Those, those are the, because we've got a whole generation that doesn't know that they're called to be transformed and conformed to the image of the risen Christ. And they're doing things like, well, I don't know who I am. The Enneagram's going to tell me. There's, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be really nice. I mean, I've literally seen not one, but several people this week posting, because I'm a five or because I'm an eight, this verse will speak to me. Well, because you're a Christian, shouldn't every dang verse speak to you? Now, if if you're, I'm not saying that, you know, if you're if you've dabbled with the enneagram, I'm, there's no judgment there because I mean we've got some well-known ministers and ministries promoting this, and I don't think any less of them. I think they probably need to do a little more research, right? Um, but we've got whole people turning to stuff like that because they don't understand who they are. And who they're called to be. Now, am I all? Am I? I'm all about love languages and finding your personality. I'm all about that. But when that, when that replaces a biblical identity, and if y'all want to know more about that, I'll give you some videos. Um, some of the leaders at Global Awakening are actually starting to put those out and saying they've had so many people in their supernatural school and in their deliverance ministry saying. Um, can you tell us about this? Because this is, we're worried about the influence of these things. And people like Dr. Mike Hutchings are putting out these videos and saying, you need to look deeper into this thing. Okay, so again, I'm not trying to be super, look for a devil under every bush or condemn people who've looked into that, but we need to, we need to understand who we are because of the word and the spirit and not who we are from spirit writing. All right, so a little, little sidestep there, and, you know, again, I, it's not to judge or condemn, but it's just to make us aware, amen. Because the, re- <laughs> the reality is that, you know, when some, we, we try to, the, the devil's really good at counterfeiting power, but he's nowhere near as good as Jesus, right? And you do understand that he's always tried to counterfeit the real, didn't, didn't the prophets of Baal try to do that on Mount Carmel? And, and you know, didn't the, the sorcerers in Egypt try to duplicate and they turn their staff into a, a snake and then Moses comes in, throws the staff down, turns into a snake and swallows up all the power of the enemy, right? So the issue, you know, a lot of times people want to say, well, you know, signs and wonders, they're of the devil. No, there are counterfeit signs and wonders, but if they point towards Jesus, they're real. If they're drawing away to other sources and other gods, yes, they're counterfeit, right? But we should be walking in power, in demonstration, and authority, amen? Another reality is triumph. We should be walking in victory over powers of darkness, right? There's a, there's a victory that has been given us as we're seated in heavenly realms far above all rule, all power, all dominion and authority. Now, unfortunately, this is truth. But of course, it doesn't mean there's not going to be battle. It doesn't mean there's not going to be believing. And I heard Robbie share some things at Voice of the Apostles, and I heard him heard it share, him share it again over the last couple of days. And um, you know, I love what they do, and I'm just going to share what they do. And uh, he was getting ready to minister a very, very large conference in England. You know. Tens of thousands of people there, and about 45 minutes to an hour before he's supposed to go on, he starts getting flu-like symptoms. He says, it felt like knives were in my throat. I lost my voice. 
couldn't do anything. And he said, I went to the guy who's over the conference and it's like, I can't preach. Right. And the guy was like, um, we've got thousands of people here. Do you see the 10 cameras set up? You're going to preach. Get over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good pastoral advice. Suck it up, buttercup. Right. <laughs> So, you know what he did? He called his sons and said, this is happening. I need you to do something. So, you know what they did? They went to the ER and started praying for sick people and evangelizing them. They didn't pray for their dad. They went and got people born again. Yeah, he told them, he said, and the the kids told Robbie, let us know when it lifts. And because they went and they saw people born again and healed, he said, the enemy left me alone. He calls him Little Lucy. And he said, because if Little Lucy is going to strike me, I'm going to strike back and I'm going to make him pay. When he was a pastor at one of the worst cities in Illinois, a lot of gang violence, and he said, I learned this from the gangs. Because if one gang would kill one person, that gang would kill three of the other gang in retaliation. He said, so any time in our city where there was a drive-by shooting or an area where someone had been killed and there was violence, he said, we'd go out and evangelize and get at least three people born again. And it transformed their city from one of the most violent in Illinois to one of the most transformed. And he was a pastor for 17 years, right, through the vineyard doing this stuff. Maybe the key in our city, in Ardmore, everybody wants to talk about how bad Ardmore is. Let's make the devil pay for the things that he's done, right? Let's make him pay. When he hits you with sickness, and I tell you what, and I've said this before, but you guys were here. Many of you, when Charlie Shamp, the first time he was here, and my mom's dying of cancer. He prayed for, and then he prophesied over me that my apostolic sign would be the healing of cancer. And my mom dies of cancer, and then seven months later, my dad, who we don't even know has multiple myeloma, which is a form of cancer, dies from that. Had Ken Keith pass from cancer? I think we, as a body of believers, need to make the devil pay. And there's an anointing that he's given us as basic equipment. Basic equipment. It's just like being issued a gun and a helmet. I've never been in the army, right? But they issue you basic equipment. It's yeah, it's a good thing. What, that I was never in the army or that they... <laughs> that probably is a good thing, right? <laughs> I don't like this food, right? <laughs> I need a mattress a little better than that. <laughs> we do that in the church. Um, <laughs> I didn't like that song, right? <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> there, is a, there is a basic equipment that he's given us as believers. But at the same time, there's something that we have to get a hold of because I think cancer needs to bow its knee. There's an apostolic anointing that he's put on us because you understand all that, you know, your leaders, the same thing that's on them, it goes down to the people, good or bad. Hallelujah. But there's an anointing that God's giving to break the power of cancer, and we just need to press into that and get a hold of it. And there are other afflictions that need to go. There are people struggling here today with physical things, autoimmune issues, a whole lot of other stuff that, man, that needs to be put under the feet of Jesus because we're seated with him in heavenly places far above all rule, dominion, sickness, disease, 
darkness, bondage. We've got to get a hold of that. Right? And it may cost us something. Did it cost them something when the enemy struck them and they said, all right, praise God, we're going to put on Netflix and veg. I'm in grief, and I, I understand grief, right? We're in grief, and we need some me time. No. We're going after the powers of darkness, and we're putting them down, and we're releasing the kingdom and we're going to strike the kingdom of darkness back. Right? By releasing what he's already given us. You guys, it's a challenge to me to do some of this stuff. I mean, I'm preaching to you today. And you know what? When I go to Walmart, I really don't want to pray for anybody. I don't even want to go to Walmart. I'll go to one of the $200 generals that are in town. <laughs> it's very convenient, right? <laughs> but there's something where we've got to take the kingdom. Now, praise God for what he's doing in these four walls. Praise God that people can get healed and delivered and all those things but you know that's part of what the church is called to be is an equipping center makes me kind of wish when the guy set the fire across the street this week instead of calling 911 911 911 <laughs> yeah you get it right it's a Tulsa area code no um I don't know you know I could have walked over there and said hey I don't know what I would have said. Because <laughs> when you look out and somebody has set a fire and they're warming themselves up in front of a vacant house, you're like, wait a minute. Next to your school, you're concerned, right? But what if I'd ministered the gospel to him, right? What if that would have been my first response? And I'm not saying I shouldn't have called the police because our first priority is to keep kids safe, <laughs> Right? But what if our first response is a default of, man, maybe this is the day that Alvin gets delivered from his demons. Maybe this is the day that the red-headed lady on the bicycle, now we've ministered to her. Carrie and some ladies ministered to her one day. She wept and wept. It's the presence of God touched her. But maybe, just because we ministered to him once doesn't mean we don't do it again. Because maybe that day, maybe that next time is the day of salvation. When those things that have been keeping her bound, she gets set free. We've got to be aggressive. Because... The only way, and we can sing songs about it, about the knowledge of the glory of the Lord covering the earth as the water covers the sea. And, you know, should we do those things? Yes. Should this be a place of equipping and safety and fellowship and family? Yes. But you know why Kanye's being so effective? He's doing it. He's preaching the gospel. In places that if I went and did something in L.A. or somewhere, 50,000 people probably wouldn't gather. It's just the way it is, you know, right? But there, there's a harvest. There's a harvest that's waiting, right? And you don't have to be a superstar, you don't have to be a Kanye. You don't have to be a Justin Bieber, right? You don't have to be a Bill Johnson. You don't have to be a Heidi Baker. Be who God has called you to be, but transformed by the glory and the presence, the Holy Spirit working in you. Hallelujah. One other thing I'll say here, the fourth one. 
holiness. Amen. There's a holiness that should be on us. And, you know, I've taught about holiness before. And holiness really is about that whole reality of we've been separated to his purposes. Right? Now, should we be moral and all those things? Yes. Right? But if you start getting touched by Holy Spirit and you start getting transformed, he'll start dealing with those things. and He'll start separating you so that you can be, you know, useful to the Lord because of his glory and his presence that's resting upon you. Embrace who you've been called to be, right? Embrace who you've been called to be. Embrace who Holy Spirit is transforming you into. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand together this morning. So we're going to pray, and I do this almost every Sunday, but I'm going to commission you guys to go and be Jesus. All right. I'm going to commission you guys to further be transformed and go and carry the gospel of the kingdom into your communities, into your workplaces, into your home today. So, Father, I want to thank you today. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit, that he dwells in us. But, Lord, right now, I ask, Holy Spirit, come and dwell in glory on each one of us. Lord, we want to host your glorious presence, not just when we come together on Sunday, though that's so important, God. But, Lord, we want to host your glory. We want to walk in your glory throughout this week. So, Holy Spirit, I ask that you begin to come on all of us right now. You're in us, but I ask that that fiery presence, that same glory that came upon the believers on the day of Pentecost, I I ask that you just begin to rest on each person today. Lord, the fire of your presence, the glory of your presence, that authority that you've given us, that power that you've given us, Father, that you're wrapping us in love, you're wrapping us in holiness, you're wrapping us in power so that we can go out and share the gospel. Father, where there's infirmity, God, we come against it right now in Jesus' name. Father, we come against every sickness, every disease, We release healing, health, and wholeness to each person today, God. Father God, bring freedom from sickness and disease. Father, break the power of oppression. Father, we're we're oppressed. Father God, we've let the enemy have access to our lives. Father, I take authority over those things in Jesus' name, and I declare freedom. Father, let the wind of your spirit blow on each one of us today. Set us free from every affliction every oppression, and Father, uh, I commission this people today to move throughout the week and to move and live as Jesus is in this moment. Father, we thank you today. Father, I thank you there's just a glory of your presence that's coming in greater measure right now. Father, it's coming on people right now. He's coming on people. Thank you for the equipping. Thank you for the commissioning that you're releasing, Father God. Thank you that you're commissioning us in power and love. You're commissioning us to go and release your kingdom throughout all the earth, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're going. Father, I I just thank you even right now. There's an apostolic commissioning for their coming. Father, as I just sense that, Uh, that glory and that weighty presence on my back and my shoulders. Father, I thank you that you're further commissioning this place, the body of Christ. And I know there are other expressions of the body of Christ. And Father, we just bless every local church in this city. Father, to begin to move. Father, to begin to move in what you've commissioned your church to move in. And Father, I pray where there's witchcraft assignments that you just break it out of every local church right now. Father, where there are people that are workers of darkness that have disguised themselves and they've gone in to bring confusion and disarray, Father, I pray that you set them free and that they would get saved. 
And Father, and if they are not going to get saved, that they'd be removed. And Father, that their assignments would be broken, God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just call this church, we call the church in Ardmore to arise in authority. Father, we bless the local church in Ardmore, Oklahoma, in this region, to do the works of Jesus, to, to rise up in authority today. We call and declare. Father, this is a, a season and a year of declaration. We call the church to arise. Holy Spirit, blow upon your people today. Blow, let, let the breath of God come into every person, every local church today, God, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We honor you. We love you today. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, praise God. Now, if you need physical healing, uh, we'll have a team here to pray for physical healing. Amen. If you need a prophetic word, you need some prophetic encouragement, we'll have a prophetic team right here that you can come and receive. If you want to go further and deeper into physical healing, knowing how to pray for the sick, knowing how to work, move in words of knowledge, then this week, this week and this month, our School of Healing at GHSSM. Next Sunday... Um, Abner will be with us, and I believe Abner Abner's always strategic when he's here. He always releases so much, and I just think next Sunday is going to be powerful. Be here, invite people, and uh, and let's just go higher. Amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Have a great day. Amen. You are commissioned because you're anointed and being transformed. Amen. God bless.